Today we talk about what? How to have a long, amazing, epic, unbelievable life. It's really going to be good, but it is Chuck Norris Friday. Friday. It's Friday, Wait. Monday. Hey, it was always Chuck Norris Friday. Well, but you're once. right. Today's Monday. Sorry, <laughs> I, I reverted to like an old person. That I'm 50 now, so I'm still uh, yeah stuck in the roundabout. Do you know Omicron gets a uh, vaccine for Chuck Norris every year? <laughs> Vaccinates against Chuck Norris. Freddy Krueger has nightmares about Chuck Norris. We'll be right back. Oh, who knows? Who remembers Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. It's good to have you with us today. We've got a great show for him today. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about honoring mom and dad. And we how are. it's going to go well with you, and for, you're going to have a long life. It's so interesting. It's a, it's a top ten command that right? comes with a promise. Right, and Ephesians 6 uh, bears this out. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, yeah. so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool thing. Uh, we got a clip, though, we want to play? Let's play a clip. He said this phrase in Psalms chapter 119 and verse 99. He said, I know I have more understanding than all of my teachers. For your testimonies, now that word there is commands, your commands, like the honor my father and mother command, are my what? Meditation. And so don't let the world distract you from your ability to gain understanding of the things in your life that matter. So good. Because as we bore out last week is understanding brings action in our life. Mm -hmm. Right? So we, we all know what to do. Everybody in here knows how, how to be successful. We, we know it. But it's not until we've really meditated, right, thought about over and over, we forged as we talked about last mm -hmm. week on that, on that wisdom, mm -hmm. that we begin to gain understanding and then we begin to apply actions to what we're doing, mm. right? And they're and, proper decisions. Bad decisions make 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 for make a bad mess. life. But we can't have good decisions <clears throat> without good understanding, right? And and so uh, one of the things we, we talked about was honor. Uh, what we did was kind of experience the idea of meditation, like like you, I said there in this clip that David said, "I know more than all my teachers because I meditate on your commands." So we picked a command during the sermon and we right. meditated on it. We're like, okay, honor your mom and dad so that it might go well with you. You might live a long life. And so we, today we thought, well, let's talk about let's honor. That. Talk about honor because I mean we can talk about parents, we can talk about honoring bosses, we can mm -hmm. talk about right where, where honor is. But really, it starts with uh, having the ability to honor parents. And what um, you you mentioned in your in your uh, sermon also that some parents are not honorable. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? I said like they they weren't there. They weren't. Well, and you they, hear that. I'm more pastors. So we hear that one a lot. You right. Know? Well, you don't know, Mike. I can't honor my dad. So what do I do? We, you, that's interesting. <laughs> right. Uh, you honor. You honor. Uh, so, so, then, so then you get the idea. You start to build this, uh, this picture or image of a God who operates without conditions. Right. So he's not waiting for you to be good enough for him to send his son Jesus to you. Right? Well, you'd never get it. Right. <laughs> never so, happen. So, so then he says, and imitate me. Like have that same kind of mercy and grace that I have because it's a winning strategy. It's how you win in life. And, uh, and and you were made in God's likeness and right. image, so you're going to operate in, in His kingdom. You have to understand His principles. And so that's really where you, st kind of the starting line for, I think, for me, meditating on this scripture is to go, uh, how do you honor parents that are not honorable? Right. That's learning how to honor without condition. Without condition. And it, go it applies to everything. Well, my boss is a church pastor, so what, what am I supposed to do about that? Honor him. Honor. And the reason it's easy, the reason it's easy to honor him or her is that you honored your parents who maybe weren't honorable. Come on, Jason. So, so at some good. point we have to cross this bridge where where I'm going to I'm going to part ways with the world strategy of I honor because you are honorable. I'll respect you when you earn my respect. That's a world strategy and it sure makes sense. I mean, that's the strategy we would right. uh, you could say that out loud in any room and 100 people out of 100 people would agree with you absolutely. But God's like, yeah, this <laughs> It's a broken strategy. It doesn't work. Because you want to know why? Because it comes from the world. And so Satan takes something and he just tweaks it enough. And he makes it sound pretty, doesn't he? Well, sure. It sounds right. You're yeah. like, well, that sounds right. Yeah, you don't have to respect somebody that's not respectable. <laughs> right? Right. You know, but but God loves all people. He sent his son to die for... There's treasure in everybody. <laughs> 
That's it. It's like, treasure. That's the revelation. That's that's the revealed, exposed, right. naked scripture, right? Just peel it back, take all the clothes off that scripture, and you remember that there's treasure in it's everyone. In your dad. Stop looking at the clay. There's something valuable inside of every person. Right? Yeah. And I heard Joel Osteen say that honor means to give value to. So true. Right? Just you treat them, treat them it's a great valuable. It, it may be, you know, you, you find a hundred dollar bill on the, on the ground and you don't go, well, you know, that, and somebody's like, yeah, that thing has been horrible. You know, it bought prostitution, it bought blah, blah, blah. Bought drugs. Right, right, right. It's been bad, bad but there, places. There's, you're like, yeah, okay. I don't care where it's been. It still has value. It still has value. don't care value. what it's done. It's and still that's just has, a stupid piece of paper. It's just, has, it still has value. So my mom's real father was very abusive and then uh, divorced, you know, they got divorced and that really wasn't in my mom's life and did mm -hmm. a lot of mean, mean things. I mean, the uh, story is story is story. But then when I was in third grade, mom got a hold of the scripture and called grandpa up mm -hmm. and then began to have grandpa in our world mm -hmm. and really didn't honor him based on what kind of father he was, but because he existed mm -hmm. and treated him valuable, mm -hmm. right? And once again, you see, you, you see that, and same thing for her mom. She began to value uh, grandma, who was not the nicest person. And then for some reason, it always it falls down another generation, because me and grandma always battled. We had the epic battle. She annoyed me to know, because I wasn't used to it. Our mom was very encouraging. My grandmother was very discouraging. Mm -hmm. So you and I couldn't be around that very long. Mm -hmm. It just annoyed us. <laughs> And then we yeah. teased the heck out of her. Yeah, we did tease her. And then one day I got a hold of it. We, my dad bought a, a desk at a yard I knew, sale. That was my favorite story. And uh, she came out to this desk out in the garage. And I was just, we were just standing out there playing pool. And there's this desk for, that he bought at a yard sale. She goes, who ruined that desk? And I just go, I did. But I didn't. I had never even no, touched the desk. It was, a, it was an old yard sale desk. Right. So we were just. And she's like, why? And you go, because I wanted to. It's, it's and so then she bad. goes in and tells the dad, you know, dad on you. And he's like. The desk is already ruined. What's the big deal? <laughs> Honey, it was ruined when she bought it. I remember. <laughs> but, but I... I that's from, I be, I that's be, from Cat in the Hat. I'm sorry. I, I, I pulled in a cat in the hat. Uh, but I began to just honor Grandma because she existed. And all of a sudden, she began to be nice and kind. And we ended yeah. up with a, a, an amazing a great woman. relationship. An unbelievably wonderful, A great relationship. Woman. And same thing for you. When you begin, yeah. uh, Mr. Rogers, that was, a, a, I love that movie, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Neighborhood or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. It was about a guy who, at the end, he got some God in him, even though they didn't really say it. But he, we know he did as you watched it. And he began to honor his dad and everything in his life that was, it began to fall in place. Mm -hmm. It was crazy how that works. Yeah. So anyway. Well, most people, you know, you have to understand the favor of God is going to operate in this in this arena uh, you know, on your behalf because most people will live on this planet their entire lives and never be lived with loved without condition laterally. Mm. Yes. God loves them without condition, but the laterally, horizontally, they're not going to be loved without condition from other people. Most people will live their whole lives that way. Right. Every, everybody forces everybody to love each other on condition. So when you become an unconditional person, when you begin to give love, you you get on people's radar really fast because you're odd. It you're doesn't different. make sense. You you want to be loved without condition. Each one of us wants that. More than anything, almost. So, so the boss has to deal with everybody hates the boss because you want to know why? Because that's the worldly principle. Everybody yes. hates authority. Everybody, everybody talks about authority. Them, everybody, yeah. everybody, they get excluded from everything. And all of a sudden, there's one person that doesn't hate them unconditionally, but actually seems to care and what's seems, wrong with you and seems to have grace for them even on their bad days and and seems to be good to them without condition and seems to honor them though they've never earned it that's gonna break apart all kinds of walls oh. in people because because it's so odd <laughs> it's just so rare right that they're gonna be drawn to you with great favor and 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 you're gonna be treated with exception among the rest. You're going to find yourself elevated. Would you say that favor could be really much connected to honor? Of course. If and I it, honor you, I'm going to get favor from you. Right? Is because it, it's so rare. You're like, whoa, what is that? That person just honored me. Now, if you just walk around and claim <laughs> like, you... We're, we're just attracted to that. What's going on? I like this. Whatever this is. This, it's warm. This like, honor thing. You, actually be, you know when it's real cold outside and there's a, like, a warm fire? You become that warm. People are like, I don't know why. I just like being around you. And I, and I brought up this between spouses that, you know, in, in America today, what we do is we dishonor men because they're bad. 
Right. Men are just bad for all kinds of reasons because of their egos and their toxic masculinity and they're lazy and they're forgetful and they're all the things that actually make us great were criticized for. Right. But when a woman begins to honor a man, you said that without absurd. condition, and every man on the inside went, they were going, yeah. <laughs> right. If you want to, ladies, if you want to win oh. a man, forget about the short skirt and the and the, no, the right. Yeah. No, what we want is honor. Right. Now the short skirt might attract Get it for a moment. Might attract attention for a moment. But they're not going to take you seriously. No. That's not a long term interest. You build I mean, up a man. No, no. But you honor a man. That's so rare. We just chase it. And I, did I say it today or yesterday? I don't know. It, you, know you talk about Ephesians. I think it's chapter 5. Remember, I said I don't know where the scriptures are when it says husbands love your wife. But at That's the Ephesians end there, five. Got at it. the end, it talks about women give honor to your husbands. It does. So it, he's given the answer to both. How do I have a great marriage? Men, love your wives unconditionally. Women, give your husbands honor unconditionally. Yeah, it uses the word submit, but actually the translation would mean to believe in and honor. Oh. A, Encourage. A, a man that, so a man that's not believed Baby, in. Can do will it. go nowhere. But a man that has a wife that believes in him, he oh, could be Lord working Jesus. at Burger King today. But I'm telling you, she's like, baby, you make the best whopper. You go get him today. Yeah, it's true. He, he will go out and he will conquer the world. And so what Satan does is he deceives the world into tearing the men down mm -hmm. so that they'll do nothing. But that's you, the deception. And that's what happens. And a so man just, that fe feels defeated... He won't do anything. Yeah, I just sit on the couch and watch some football. What do I care? But if, we, <laughs> but, get it. but if you honor that man, if we honor the women, the Bible says that wisdom is on her tongue. But you know what? You're not going to get that wisdom into your ear from her tongue until it comes out of her mouth. Right. And the way you draw out that wisdom into your world is by valuing her opinion and, and honoring her uh, enough to say, baby, how, what should I do? Right. You're brilliant. I know you're brilliant. I know wisdom's on your tongue, but I need to know I'm going to honor you right now because I'm going to value your input. Instead of where we in a marriage, well, what do you know? You don't know what's going on. Stop trying to solve my problems. Get out of here. <laughs> and so honor can change a marriage. Just that one thing. Right. And it started with learning how to honor your parents. Hey, man, you want to pray over the day? Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this word. And I thank you, Father, that you are teaching us to honor and that you're giving us the strength. You always give us this. You never ask us to do something you don't give us the power to do supernaturally from the inside. That the Holy Spirit is strengthening our resolve now. We're forgiving uh, old things of, of maybe with our parents or authority people that wronged us, abused us. We're, we're letting those things go and we're drawing upon you, Father, for your strength that we might be able to do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, watch this clip. The things of this world don't make sense to the things of the Spirit. But we've got to press in. David understood this principle. He said this phrase in Psalms chapter 119 and verse 99. He said, I know I have more understanding than all of my teachers. For your testimonies, now that word there is commands. Your commands, like the honor my father and mother command, are my what? Meditation. And so don't let the world distract you from your ability to gain understanding of the things in your life that matter, be it stewardship, finances, health, marriage, family, children, relationships. Find out what God says and let the truth of God demolish the lies and the wrong philosophies that have been driving your decisions for far too long. Abraham, David, Daniel, Solomon, these are great heroes, but not just of faith, but they were great heroes of understanding. And when Jesus taught, they marveled at his teaching. Why? Because of the understanding that came out of his mouth. We hear knowledge from a position of understanding, but with effort and experience, we can gain that same understanding in our lives and start to make better and better decisions and stop wrecking things that God's given us don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. And we were just giving you, you know, a great marriage. You need a spark. That's coming up in February 23rd. Mm -hmm. February 23rd at 7. Fly in for it. At 7 p.m. is our marriage event. And um, yeah, you just need a little spark. We're calling it spark. Spark. Yeah. A little spark will change everything. We'll be teaching at it. You can hear some of what we're talking about, about this even just today. Huh? Yeah, it's going to yeah. be good. And you find out this is a little spark can make such a difference. Anyway, and also if you're not married, it's perfect time to learn. People get married without any understanding. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I'd like to do maybe five minutes on on just the the keys to what to look for in a in a right in a spouse. Right. That's my. I, I find that people ask me the question, "How do I know? How will I know? How will I know?" I'm how like, will I know? It's in the scripture. It's, right. God outlines it. 
Uh, and so I can I can show you that. I need to get that because I'm writing a singles book. Yeah, it'll it'll floor you for sure. Not you. Oh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you I would want them in church. Uh, anyway, we'll get it there. Yeah. All right, be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.